Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about how to simplify radicals to exponents and exponents to radicals and also how to solve radical equations. So there is a rule and the rule says that if I take some base and raise it to a power, it's going to be equal to a radical of some sort. So the way I remember it is x to the power over root is equal to the something root of x to the power. Okay, so the way I remember it is that here is the baseline and the roots of trees are always on the bottom. So it'll be a root on the bottom, power on top. Some people like to say power lines like electricity, you know, power lines are above ground, roots are below ground. So the most common conversions that we will have is x to the one half, x to the one third, and x to the one fourth. Now remember, since the two, the three, and the four are on the bottom, they're considered the roots, and the one is considered the power. So if I were to convert x to the one half, it would be the square root of x, which you don't have to write the square root, so you could just write square root of x. Number two would be the cube root of x, and the third one would be the fourth root of x. So those are most common conversions that we use that you may want to memorize. Okay, so let's take a few examples and see if we can do them. So number one, I want you to express each exponential expression as a radical. So again, the root is on the bottom and the power is on the top. So this would be the third root of 9 to the second power. Now we can simplify this, but let's just leave it like that uh, for now so that we get the concept. So how about number two? Again, the root is on the bottom and the power is on the top. So this would be the cube root of 1,000 squared. Okay, now what do you notice about example number three? You should be saying, well, it has a negative exponent. And we can't really say that I'm going to take 32 and raise it to the negative 3 power. So the first thing you always want to do is make the exponents positive. So how do I do that? This is the same thing as writing 1 over 32 to the 3 fifths power. Remember, you can take any negative exponent and bring it to the denominator of a fraction and it becomes positive. And now we do the same thing, where this is the root on the bottom, and this is the power. So the answer would be 1 over the fifth root of 32 to the third power. Okay, number 4. Just because the base is negative doesn't mean I need to move it to the denominator. So this we could do like normal. The root is on the bottom, the power is on top, so this would be the third root of negative 8 squared. I put negative 8 in parentheses because negative 8 squared is 64, not negative 64. Okay, how about number 5? What if I add some, some variables? So same concept again, the, the bottom is the root, the top is the power, so this would be the third root of 16ab all to the second power. See how this whole entire thing is in parentheses? That means I'm taking the cube root of this whole thing squared. All right, so make sure you're using those parentheses. All right, in number six, it's a little difficult to see, but the exponent is negative. So the first thing you want to do is take that negative exponent and bring it downstairs. So everything here goes down. So 1 over a squared minus b squared to the 1 fourth power. So again, the 4 is a root. The 1 is a power, so my answer is 1 over the fourth root of a squared minus b squared to the first. Now, I'm not going to write to the first power because that's one of those common conversions. I know that if it's to the 1 fourth, it means the fourth root. All right, why don't you see if you can do 7 and 8 by yourself and pause the video until you've done so. Okay, here are your answers. So the first thing is that you have a negative exponent with number 7, so we write it using positives. So a minus bc to the 2 fifths power. 5 is on the bottom, so that was a root. So 1 over the fifth root of a minus bc, this whole thing, squared. Okay, because again, the 5 is the root, the 2 is the power. 
All right, now what was unique about number eight was that the negative happened to be in the denominator. So we had to actually bring this whole thing up. So it's five times x squared minus five to the positive five sevenths power. Now seven is a root, five is a power. And we have five times the seventh root of x squared minus 5 to the fifth power. Okay, so this 5 out here is just being multiplied. So it's basically like 5 times the seventh root of x squared minus 5 to the fifth. All right, now how about we go the reverse way? Given the radical, can you give me the exponential expression? So this here is to the fourth root, so there's like always an imaginary one. You could always put these in parentheses and everything to the first power. You could put this in here to the first, because it's all under radicals, so they all are being raised to one-fourth, one-third. So this is three to the one-fourth power, because this is the root four, one is the power. Okay, so again, five is the root, that goes on the bottom. So 2 to the third to the 1 -fifth power, which we can now multiply 3 times 1 -fifth. So 3 times 1 -fifth is 3 fifths. So 2 to the 3 fifths power. You could have gotten that if you went straight from root and power with the 3 there. That would have been fine. Same thing with number 3, you could do 9 to the 4 over 2, but I'm going to do it with the 1 because it's a little easier. So 9 to the 4th to the 1 half power, because it's a square root, and then I can multiply 4 and a half, and I get 2, so 9 squared. Alright, same thing with number 4, it's a square root, and then so we actually could work with the inside out on this one. So I could really make this 5 to the 1 half, because that's the square root, to the third power. And then I can multiply these exponents, so this would be 5 to the 3 halves. All right, let's try number 5. So again, it's a square root, so the 2 is the root that's going to go on the bottom, and the 1 will go on top. So it's this whole thing. It's 64 a to the 4th, b to the sixth to the one-half power. Now you don't have to simplify it, even though we can. We could talk about that in class, but let's just get the process down. So what would number six be? Square root, so a to the third, b to the sixth, that whole thing under the radical to the one-half power. Now number seven is the fourth root. Remember we said that's to the one-fourth power. So 64x to the fourth to the one-fourth and number eight, this whole thing raised to the one-third power. It's underneath the cube root. So a squared minus nine squared to the one-third. We can multiply those. So a squared minus nine to the two-thirds. Okay, that's it. Now this should have been a little bit of a review. You did this last year in Algebra 2. Now let's go on to simplifying radical equations. Okay, this too should be a review from last year, but let's review it anyway. So whenever I'm trying to solve an equation that has a radical, the first thing that we want to do is isolate the radical to one side of the equal sign. So in this first example, we have to get rid of this negative 3. So we can add it to both sides. So we have the square root of 2 minus 2y equals y plus 3. Not 3y, again, because they're not equal. Not like terms, you can't add them. So now what we want to do is we have to solve this equation for y, so we're going to want to get rid of this radical. Well, you want to ask yourself, what's the opposite of square rooting? And you should be saying squaring. So this is where step two comes in. We're going to square both sides. Now the square and the square root cancel each other out because they're opposites of each other. So we have 2 minus 2y equals y plus 3 squared. Now please do not distribute this 2 in here. You are not allowed to just take this 2 and multiply it to those two things. We have to double distribute. So this is y plus 3 times y plus 3, which quickly is y squared plus 6y plus 9. That's after you 
do all the pieces, equals 2 minus 2y. Okay, so now we want to solve for y. Uh, now the only way to solve this equation for y is to get these two pieces to the other side because whenever I have a y squared equation I want to set it equal to zero so that I can factor and solve. So minus two and plus two y. So zero equals y squared plus eight y plus seven. And then we factor using the AM method you should get 1 and 7, and the roots are negative 1 and negative 7. Now, the biggest thing with these equations is that you actually have to check them because sometimes they may not work. So let's go ahead and check both of them. So I'm going to rewrite the original equation because you always want to check into the original. And we're going to plug in y is negative 1 first. So let's work from the inside out. 2 plus 2 is 4. So negative 3 plus 4. Negative 3 plus 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. And negative 3 plus 2 is in fact negative 1. So that works. So we can go ahead and box this one. And now let's try negative 7. So negative 3 plus radical. 2 minus 2 times negative 7 equals negative 7. So all I did was instead of negative 1, I solved and plugged in a negative 7. And what do we get here? I think this is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1, not negative 7. So those two are not equal. Therefore, we have to reject this one. Okay, so this is why checking is very, very important. Okay, uh, that is the more basic type of example, example number one, but example number two is a little bit challenging. Uh, this is more of where precal comes in and strays away from algebra two. Do you see how I have two radicals and it's really impossible for me to isolate just one of them? So the only way to do this is to square both sides right away. So we're going to square this side, and we're going to square this side. When we square the left-hand side, the left-hand side's good because the square and the square root cancel each other out like nice, so we have x squared plus 4. But I can't just square this and cancel out the radical because I have this 2 here. So really what you actually want to do is you're going to distribute the power of 2 into each of the pieces. So you're going to take 2 and raise it to the second power. That gives you 4. And when I take the radical, x plus 4, to the second power, that cancels. So that's okay. So this cancels, and I'm left with just x plus 4 that I need to multiply. Now I understand this concept may be a little bit tricky, so what you can do is just put a little star next to it if you had some trouble, and I'll go over that concept tomorrow. But generally speaking, the rest of the algebra should be easy. We're just going to solve. So we have x squared plus 4 equals 4x plus 16. And again, because I have this x squared, I'm going to get everything over to one side and factor and solve. So first I'll subtract 16. So x squared minus 12. Then I can subtract the 4x. So x squared minus 4x minus 12, and then I get what numbers add to negative 4, then multiply to negative 6. So think about that for a minute. You should get x minus x, x minus 6, and x plus 2. So my roots are x equals 6, and x equals negative 2. So what I'd like you to do now is the checks. Pause the video, see if you can get them both to work or one to work, um, and then hit resume for the answers. Okay, this is what you should have gotten. Okay, if you got these two, you should have gotten, when you plugged in 6, that radical 40 equals 2 radical 10. And when you plugged in negative 2, you should have gotten radical 8 equals 2 radical 2. 
If you rejected both of these, unfortunately your answer is not correct because they both work. Because can't you break down 40 into the square root of 4, square root of 10, which is in fact 2 radical 10? And can't you break down the square root of 8, which is 4 and 2, which is in fact 2 rad 2? So they are equal, it just required a little bit of work. All right, so the general idea for this concept of solving radical equations is to isolate the radical, get the radical to one side of the equal sign, square, and solve. And then you check your answers. Sometimes you'll have the case where you'll have two radicals on either side, and you can't isolate one of them, so you just go ahead and square. But you have to be careful when there's another term there. So what we did was we took 2 squared and made it 4, and then this radical can cancel out. So again, we can go over this piece tomorrow, but the concept is still the same. Solve for the roots, plug them in to see which ones work. Alright, that's it for today. Have a good night.